Crews cleared out a homeless camp in McPherson Square in downtown D.C. today. The National Park Service says that people staying there were given more than two weeks' notice. Social service workers came in to help with housing. There have been support for this, a lot of criticism for this move. We have Christopher Fay, the executive director of Home Stretch Incorporated, joining us tonight. Uh, Christopher, thanks for being here. I'm delighted. Thank you. This uh, was a controversial move. A lot of people were saying, hey, hold on, let's give these people some more time. Um, but some city leaders and park leaders were saying, no, this is a safety concern. I just want to get your reaction about what happened today. Well, I think it's a complicated issue. And I think we tend to minimize just how complicated and how nuanced it is. One of the things I want to point out is people who live in these camps, the homeless individuals who live in these camps, do so because they feel safer. Homeless people tend to be far greater, uh, greater incidence of being victims of crime than perpetrators. And a homeless person is far more likely to be experience crime against himself than to commit crimes against others. So if you move the encampment, you're simply moving the problem from one place to another. And you mentioned that they were given two weeks. Two weeks is not a lot of time to be able to find a safe place to live. Most of these individuals, even if they're waiting on waiting lists for housing vouchers, that whole system of vouchers um, is way behind. Now, there are people living in that McPherson Square right. camp who are on, who are on list have been waiting for a long time, and they, the, the opportunity to get a housing has not arisen. Yeah, I mean, today... I do want to say, uh, on behalf of a lot of homeless advocates, we understand the gravity of the situation, and it is a lot of sympathy for the people who live in that community, who commute, who work there. Mm -hmm. It's a very unpleasant situation. But simply uprooting them and moving them, they'll probably be moved to another park. Yeah, I think a lot of Because they don't have many other options. We're saying today that a lot of these folks didn't know where to go. Um, a lot of these folks were given housing options, but whether or not they're going to be uh, keeping in touch with the people that are trying to keep tabs on them now, uh, who knows? So I guess the big question is, um, this was a safety concern reason of why they're being moved. This, this McPherson Square is about a block from the White House as well, uh, just for proximity purposes. What mm -hmm. needs to be done with transition here? I mean, are the different resources and agencies communicating well to be able to give uh, these people the, the kind of resources and support that they need? What needs to happen? I think that there, there actually were a lot of organizations that offered help that were not taken advantage of. And I also think when you mentioned they were giving housing options, most of the options were shelter beds. And a lot of the homeless don't feel comfortable or safe in shelters. So the options, if you, if you look at what the options are, they may not have been so attractive to the individuals who are there. Mm -hmm. Also, just for a moment to talk about who is living in these camps. There are people there with mental illness. There are people there with severe disabilities. There are people there with substance abuse addictions. There are people there with felony convictions who can't find work, and have no money, and therefore they can't, um, they don't have housing options. So the, a real concerted approach to solving this problem would be able to differentiate, first of all, between who we're talking about among the homeless and have a smorgasbord of programs and services for them. One thing I think the city has not done well is to prioritize services. The current approach, which is called housing first, to get someone in a home with limited responsibilities has really minimized the importance of getting them engaged in mental health services, substance abuse services, and health services that could um, support them. But a lot of these individuals need a lot of time, a lot of coaxing. They need to be build trust with the social workers in order to engage in that kind of service. Yeah. And I mean, the amount of time we've given them um, with the uprooting here simply wasn't enough. I know that uh, your organization, Home Stretch Incorporated, does a lot of work with the homeless. I have about 30 seconds left here. Uh, what is your group doing, and what can others do to help? Because this is clearly a crisis, and not only in D.C., but frankly, yes. in a lot of parts of this country. Oh, especially the major cities. Absolutely. Uh, just look at L.A. Home Stretch, the mission of Home Stretch is to empower homeless families with children to secure permanent housing and attain the skills, knowledge, and hope they need to become economically self-sufficient. So we actually have a wealth of services, a very deep, intensive array of services, and we work, we ask a lot of the families that come to us. They have to have skin in the game. So we require a lot of them. They have to participate in services. They have to work to find a job, 
to acquire an education, clean up their credit, build savings to restore their health, mm. resolve legal issues. But it takes time. The average family that works with us stays with us for at least two years. But because of the intensity of the engagement and the fact that we require some effort on their part, yeah. we tend to have one of the highest success rates of any program serving Which the homeless. Is in the nation. Which is so nice to hear, uh, Christopher. I hope that you continue doing the work that we're doing. I, I know that we need a lot of it, especially in this area. Uh, thank you for your expertise, Christopher Fay, Executive Director of Home Stretch Incorporated. We thank you for your time tonight. And thank you for paying attention to this issue, Sharon. Absolutely. Really we'll, we'll try to stay on top of it as best as we can.